it definitely brings the, the community out, which is great to see. That's the whole point of what the Columbia City Gallery as a part of Seed Arts is all about, trying to bring arts and culture to the community, um, especially in areas where it may not be quite as prevalent or as seem to be as reachable for most people. I know a couple of the artists here, and when I know they're showing, I like to be here. Very exciting to see this many people in the neighborhood. The gallery is more than just showing art. I've been here a long time, and I stay because of the community. I love this gallery. I love the other artists. And then it's very exciting to meet the artists, too, and hear the, and hear the process. Um, I've been here for about four and a half years at the gallery. It's just, it's been a great experience. For most of these artists, making art has been a part of their lives for many years. I've been making pottery for over 20 years now. Something that I've always, I was interested in, even from a, my youngest age, watching a neighbor throw pots in her garage. Something that I absolutely loved and fell in love with. Um, I've been doing it ever since. But I started doing art when I was a kid. Since I was born. <laughs> yeah, but I've always made art. I've been doing pottery for the last 45 years. Can't seem to quit. I'm 85 years old. Patience is one of the virtues in creating art. It's a pretty long process because the clay has to dry and be fired and it takes a few weeks for it to go through the process. There's lots of different ways in which you can make pottery. I make mine on a potter's wheel or you can hand build it. So once you make it, you let it dry, you fire it once, then you put glaze on it and then you fire it again. So it's a multi-firing process. We fire for anywhere, depending on the type of kiln, from 50 hours to five days. Some of the excitement of creating art is sometimes you don't know what you're going to get. Wait a few days for the cold to kill off and then see what you get. Because it's a totally serendipitous approach to firing. You have no idea what you're going to get until you open up the kiln and, and see how it came out. Combine what I call accident and intention. So I use different parts of my brain when I paint, and some of the time I really just try to let something happen, and then I get back in and think about it, and I may change it, and then I'll just do some other wild stuff. So my painting is a combination of letting things happen and then getting more methodical about it. This artist takes a unique approach to her work. I go to junk stores, I go to reuse stores where people tear down their homes, and bring in everything from door hinges to all kinds of stuff. Some of these things, I don't even know what they are, but they're so cool looking. It's really fun. As we all know, art can be subjective, and different interpretations are welcomed by the artists. Once I put it on the wall and walk away, the person who comes along gets to make of it what they do. Storytelling, basically, and you're seeing the story that you want to see. If a piece resonates with someone, it may not be the intention that I had. The reason that I made it might not be why you like it. Like many things in life, it's never too late to start something. I do have a master's degree in ceramics I got when I was 48. I didn't finish my bachelor's until I was 40. And I didn't know I wanted to be an artist until I was about 38. <laughs> I've been doing it seriously professionally for probably 15 years. I was a graphic designer for 30-some years. At each show, the gallery invites a guest artist or group and gives them an opportunity to show their work. The guest for this show is Path with Art. We provide arts engagement opportunities to adults that don't typically have access. It's just nice to have access to materials and then be around other folks who are creating also. Allows me to work with certain mediums that I wouldn't really be able to do on my own either. And a lot of times, in order to get access to these sorts of things, it costs money. Path with Art works together with social service partners. The students of Path with Art comes from these programs. We work with about 30 social service partners and refer folks that they think would benefit from arts engagement. And there's an income eligibility requirement. But the vast majority of folks that participate in our programming have previously or are currently experiencing homelessness. The students are taught by local professional artists. We have a teaching artist roster of about 25 local professional artists, and we hire them to teach our classes. The core value of Path with Art and the reason that we do what we do is because that we think that art is powerful and that everybody should have access to art, to creating art, to consuming art, and to sharing art with others. 
So we're an arts organization that sees the world through an equity-driven lens and thinks that the world would be a better place if more of us had access to the arts. For some, when you're having fun, there's no need to retire. <laughs> I've never been a retire. I've never done anything but play, so I figure I never will retire. <laughs> I love what I do. I can't seem to quit. I have a good time. That's the important thing.